live and direct from the capital city. It is 88.7 FM KAZI Austin 733. Good morning, y'all. It's the morning grind. Your boy Jabari Warfield, Dab Dub, and Simply Courtney. We are in the building, ready to set it off on a wonderful Wednesday. Temperature's nice. I think we're going to have a nice day today. It's going to be a little warm, but hey, that ain't nothing we ain't used to up in here. You know what I mean? Nope. <laughs> Cooking outside with no grill is it gets like, it's, it's so hot. It is crazy. What's up, fellas? Sunday, Monday, happy days. Tuesday, Wednesday, happy days. Right. Thursday, Friday, happy days. Saturday, what a day. Rocking all week for you. Never Wait. do the worst of that. Yes, sir. <laughs> hey. 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 But, but maybe in, in 2024, that version is, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Just saying, no. It's happy days, man. Happy days. Were there black people on happy days? There were there I were a few. Saw a couple. Yeah. We were sprinkled here and there. I think yeah. there was there was one. Um we always came in where the where where race was an issue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's, that was it. All right, at least be honest it. with it. Yeah. This is true. This, this is, true. is like Seinfeld. It's like, was there ever any black people? I know. Yeah, where they were at, there were black people there. <laughs> yeah, on the except, map, there except for the caricature of Johnny Cochran, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That was the best we had, right? Yep. That was I was like, y'all were in New York and didn't rent a car. No black people at all. I know. Y'all on the street. No black people. <laughs> y'all no had a Knicks people. game. Well, no black people. I was like, what? In the in the eighties, it looked like that though. No. New York looked New very York? different what? than what it is now. Really? Oh man, there, I can remember going through different parts of New York to uh-huh. see my family and friends yeah. and their cars on, on bricks, yeah. bombed out buildings. Right. And then there are other parts of New York. Where yeah, you could see the little Seinfeld, you could see the little friends coffee shops, because ain't no brothers live on that block. It really? looked like, and and you wouldn't want to walk through that block because somebody gonna call the cops. Like, what are you here? Kind of what it feels like going on. Kind of yeah, and then Central, and then yeah, there like there were now. like Italian, like like Italian neighborhoods. Uh-huh. There was the right. Jewish neighborhoods, right? And so yeah, there were there were little subsets like that because remember they they didn't deviate that far they had their diner they did stay in the Again, area that's, a that's good in their block okay where they worked yep was, was the yankees trying to put a lot of no. black people in the, in no. the front office at that time no with, not on with george costanza if they did it if they did it it was a sammy sosa it I wasn't mean, one of us steinbrenner right mm. yeah yeah i've heard i've heard some things about old john yeah. george steinbrenner what? Yeah. what wait a minute wait a minute is this that uh what's that dude from the, the clippers is this one of those moments not publicly, but but social media well, yeah, and technology well, were is prevalent. Right. Wow. So right. yeah, Steinbrenner could have got caught up. Wow. But he could have. Yeah. If it if it if it was twenty twenty four and he was still around. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh yeah. He'd have got nailed. So, I also ooh, think Steinbrenner nailed. was more uh, intimidating. And so okay. a lot of people either got fired well before, right, or they were too intimidated to even try it. I mm. think mm. Mm. versus old boy. Mm. So yeah, I I think that was another reason. And he ain't like, there right now, is what it sounds like. Oh, I'll say nah. the past tense. Nah, I, past is he time. still? Oh, oh Steinbrenner's gone. He's yeah, Steinbrenner's gone. But, um, you you're talking about old boy from the Clippers? No, no, yeah. that's not. Who I, was, I know I know Donald Sterling's gone. Yeah, yeah, is, yeah. That saga was did, well documented. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, now, I don't know that he's gone. Oh, okay, okay. I just know that he ain't with the Clippers. Oh no, he out. Because the new guy is there. He is a fool. <laughs> Have y'all seen what he's done with that stadium? No, tell, no, listen, tell us. Listen, legit. let me tell you. I'm going to brag about the Clippers for a second. Oh. The stadium, the arena. Homie, every seat has like this little like kiosk or whatever where you can order and stuff like that. I think they did the whole Los, An- Las Vegas uh, Raiders thing where it's cashless again. Yeah. They have this thing called the wall where it's like almost like vertical seating. It's not really vertical, but compared to other seats, it's vertical. And then it's crazy like they have where like there's no seating in that section. So where everybody's just going to be standing up and they have that directly behind the visitor's bench and all of that. And they want people to get loud. He has some kind of crazy situation where on each like seat or whatever it is, it's registering your decibels. Now, he does oh, claim, he says, hey, really? it's not reading, or it's not listening to your conversations. It's just registering how loud you are. And then they'll be able to say, this fan was the loudest fan. You get free stuff. Now, I still think it's kind of cool, but it is kind of invasive. Very but much so. He has like yeah. a, a, a boatload of bathrooms because he says he wants people to spend less time like trying to get to the game yeah. and in the game. So go to the bathroom quickly. Uh, you can do that whole, um, and we got a few of those here where you can go into the store. You just like kind of wind in, or I think you like you scan in, then you grab your stuff, and as you pick your stuff up as you're walking out, it scans your total and already yeah. does it from your debit card. 
it's it's wild. I think it's a really cool place. Outside, there's a concourse that has a full length basketball court. Wow. He's trying to like really make it a, a fan experience, and I think that's dope because this is an owner that is looking at his arena as basketball centric mm -hmm. and everything else is secondary and he's made that that video it's, a, it's like a 360 thing like yep. I think once again I think the Raiders have one out there too nice. and like the board has some kind of feature where it will show you like the players information all like in this big old loop or whatever. It was it was really neat. I think yeah. it's dope. I wouldn't mind going to checking out a Clippers game. No, I've heard great things, yeah. even from people within the organization are saying good things about what he does for them. Mm -hmm. So we see what he's doing for the fan, yep. but he could be fake because he's right. trying to get that money and get that shine, but he's apparently treating his employees well also. So I've heard good things about Steve Ballmer. Best That's quote, best quote, and I'll, I'll be, be done on this one. He says, hey, Free agents, be, sometimes the players we're playing against, the rival players we're playing against, are free agents, so we want to treat them right as well. And I was like, you know what? That's not wrong. This is like a yeah. recruitment visit. Yeah. Especially if it's a guy that's coming into town. He's like, oh, man, he's on his last contract. Well, let's wine and dine this guy. I know Mark Cuban famously did. They said that whenever you played against the Mavericks, as a visiting team, you were excited because you knew that they were going to wine and dine you as well. Oh. I was like, that's actually smart. Like, if I ever run a basketball team, you know, I might own a basketball team. In the future. That's crazy. I'm going to make sure I take I care. I like that. It's a good idea. It's like saying, we appreciate you coming in, putting on a show for our fans. Straight up. Yeah, I like that. Make, yeah. make us make us get dressed in our exactly. Show <laughs> exactly. 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 All right. Well, yeah. A little later on, we're gonna do what we need to talk about is what happened at the UT game. Oh, oh that God. was crazy. And let's I'm saying that yeah, oh. we'll we'll talk about that a little later. In the meantime, let's go ahead and get to the mix, y'all. Welcome one of our guests again this morning. Um she is with, I believe, with the downtown Austin Alliance. Nope. 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 Okay. But Michelle yeah, Washington, go ahead. Hit me up. she's here to talk about the 2025 Met Gala. It's gonna be co-chaired for the first time in history by all black. Men. That means I can so, go. Yeah, yeah, I can go. Yes, you could. Yeah, you could do but that. But you got to be fly though. You got to be fly. Yeah, yeah, no t-shirt. There's a dress code. You got the you, your t-shirt game is nice. Yeah. But for this, yeah. nah, they ain't letting you through the door. Okay. All right. I know. I, we gonna have to change. I can it. help you. you I can, can help, help you out. Uh, of yeah. course she can. Right, oh, so so let me tell everybody. Go for it. So she so celebrating the history of menswear through the lens of the black diaspora. Hey. Now, now some may not know what the Met Gala is. I'm gonna give the book answer, oh. and then Michelle gonna bring us in. Okay. It's a charity event and fundraiser for the Costume Institute of the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. This is an annual event. It's normally the first Monday of May. Yes. So, Michelle Washington, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm so happy to be here. And y'all are looking down at my fabulous. Don't do that. Hey. Don't do that. Uh, Norm bit. Normally, I'm, I'm feeling myself. Uh -oh. But whenever Michelle comes <laughs> through, I will be saying, thank, I should have had a brooch. <laughs> we're, we're, no, I got no tie pin, uh -oh. no lapel pin. Oh, wow. just, Michelle has everybody looking down at their own gear oh, yeah, whenever man. she walk up in here. I didn't change my shoes already. <laughs> okay, but you're rocking the tie though, son. Oh Did, yeah, this I, is a good time. I, I, I forgot. And I would have done a little, a little more. Yeah, they I just, can't see y'all, but they trust oh, me. They okay, the that. TV style yeah. expert, the couture connoisseur, and uh. you insider. Hey, nice. Nice. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Yeah. Well, the Met Gala, let me tell you, I cannot wait. It is like fashion's Christmas. Oh. Oh. May 5th, 2025. And this year, they have dubbed it the Super Fine Tailoring. Okay? Mm. Super Fine Fashion. Well, tell me something. And, you know, as men, yeah. tell me, what is it about black men and fashion that just creates electricity in yeah. the room in the same sentence yeah. as you say it? Because obviously, yeah. Vogue agrees. I can tell you, it's the confidence. It's okay. the swagger mm. that we embody. Because we, we know what it was like to walk around with the burlap bags and the hand-me-downs. But when you get that fit and you are properly fitted, mm. man, you got to be seen. Mm. And you know that you are sitting out there. The, the sun is gleaming off of mm. that skin. <laughs> And you, you walk in. That's, that's, right. that's what we do. Can I go a little further? Oh, yeah. Can I go a little further for a second? Oh, yes. All right. So I'm, I'm not even playing with y'all. The color black, when you see the color black, it could be a T-shirt. But you can make a black T-shirt look fly. Yeah. I'm looking at a black box right now. And I can't keep taking my eyes off it. Like, I'm looking at, like, <laughs> look at that black box. But the, it looks good, though. Yeah. 
Now, if it was white, I don't know if I'd be looking at it like that. I feel like white repels the eye. So I think that there's something in us that because we are black, we're melanated, that we attract the eye. And so when you put clothes on us, it's just it looks different. It fits different. It feels different. And so people might see our non-melanated friends wear something. And we're like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. But they see a black person wear it, and they're like, ooh. They hear a black person say it. They're like, ooh. They see a black person eating it. They're like, Ooh. Ooh, and Vogue obviously agrees. Mm-hmm. Now, now let's talk about. I like it. Yeah, me, let me drop one in on. Oh, that. Yeah. now we're doing something. Let me elevate. Let me elevate, we cooking. Let me elevate we cooking. this. We cooking. If we are descendants of kings, have oh. you ever seen a king walk with his head down when he walks in the room? Hey, I'm walking hey, out. Hey, 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 and that's all I'm gonna say. Dang, that's oh, all I'm gonna I, say. End the show. Let's let's go home. You brought okay. us out, <laughs> Michelle. Whenever whenever I am three piece suited, not today. I went with the with the, the Mr. Rogers neighborhood sweater <laughs> but I do commonly get from my friends who are not melanated what they always say man I love that I love that shirt I love that what is that salmon I don't want to say pink and so they say you know I couldn't pull that off oh. and and so I always think about that well that's why you can't because it's the lack of confidence oh, yes. and swagger with it if you see it and you know you got to have it and you got to rock it that's what sells it. You have hit the nail on the head. It is all about confidence. So the exhibit for the Met Gala, you know, people see the red carpet, but once you get inside, we're talking about dandyism from the 18th century oh, no. to the present. Nice. And what I love is the, the I'll call them the A-list uh, first line of fashion dandies yeah uh you have actor coleman domingo all right oh yeah uh race car driver lewis hamilton i know him he was just in town he's just here yeah yeah yeah. we should have said something to him (laughs) then you have rappers uh asap rocky okay Pharrell Williams. Hey, hey, two you up, two down. down. Yeah. Two up, two yeah. Down. yeah, yeah, he from VA. We skateboard together. I know him. Well, you know, it's no surprise that it's Pharrell Williams because he's the creative director of Louis Vuitton. That's what I was about to say because he just did the so he just did the um the Olympics, right? Yeah. And so like, I, if I remember correctly, did Louis Vuitton get just America stuff or did they get everybody stuff? Let me tell you, Louis Vuitton was all it. over it. Yes. yes. They yeah. brought the torch in Louis Vuitton yeah, luggage. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. All right. Oh, France. Especially <laughs> after, Dion, after Dion said, I'm bringing my luggage and it's yeah. Louis. <laughs> Louis been killing it. Michelle right? could back me up on this. For those who have never been to Paris, France, uh-huh. when you go in front of the Louis Vuitton store, they have an attache. Yep. They have a briefcase, what, wherever your lingo is, uh-huh. that is larger than life. It's probably 25, 30 feet tall. Dang. Outside of the building. It's, 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 it's a sight to behold. You must have seen my passport. Yes, I have been. <laughs> I've been to Paris, Italy, Taiwan, Taipei, oh. Bangkok, oh. all in the name of fashion. Good oh, grief. You're well traveled. Well traveled. I love it. You know, a girl gets tired. My arms, you know, flying all around. <laughs> <laughs> she just flew in. Just flew in your arms are tired. There we go. Dang, and all I get out, the farthest I've been is to Bay City. Oh, well, <laughs> oh, I got a real treat for, for you. Who's the honorary chair of the Met Gala among the Coleman Domingo, Lewis Hamilton, ASAP Rocky, Frill Williams. Get ready for it. LeBron James. Hey, LeBron, LeBron James. James. You got it. <laughs> not the king. Not the king. Oh, Yo, yes. are you serious? Because he's a fashionable dude. Yes, I'm he not is. Gonna lie. Every time I see that dude come out. You gotta watch. The, they call it, it's not the red carpet, but it is the red carpet. Because when yes. they walk in for that tunnel walk, you look at everything from yeah. the shoes and up. And for me, as a taller guy, I look at what he wears. Yes. Now we're not the same figure, but to see a bigger dude, see how I did that. Yeah. See, how, yeah. see a bigger dude rocking something. You're like, ooh, I yeah. wouldn't mind rocking those shoes yeah. or the sweaters. I always look at um as he's gotten older now. It's kind of cool to see his style. Oh, he'll that, he'll, do, he'll do double breasted, dude, or like like that. In the, I was cool with him snap. rocking the shorts and the, and the uh, full jacket. Well, I thought it was cool. He goes for it. He went for that one. <laughs> but y'all, y'all also brought up a good point. The tunnel is now yes. the new fashion oh, runway. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. If a brand can get their eye items on an athlete all of a sudden sales skyrocket yep. michelle I, I i i'm sorry if i'm sidetracking but to your point this was a big year for the WNBA. yes right. and 
I have never seen so much tunnel fashion in WNBA than this year. And I know Caitlin Clark was good for on the court. Absolutely. And she brought eyes. Come on now. But Angel Reese Woo! said, you can't mess with me in the tunnel. Hey. Well. And that made others, I feel like, Michelle, it made others step their game up. W- would you agree with that? The, well. the fashion overall for the WNBA? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> That's the front pew talking. <laughs> yes. You know, you know what I, you know, what the I think fan is waving. You know what I feel like it was like? Okay. And so, as much as, and we love AI, we all love Allen Iverson, right? When David Stern instituted that, um, oh. that dress code, the infamous dress code. Yeah. On one hand, some people are like, oh, man, he was being racist, whatever. Yeah. On the other hand, it made these millionaires step their fashion game up. And then all of a sudden, you started seeing there was a pride. There was the on court, the off court were starting to match up because, yeah. like, in, you have to have a uniform on court, off court. All of a sudden, these guys are suited and booted. And actually, you know, young black men like myself were like, yo, I wouldn't mind dressing like that. Or, yo, my, I remember, okay, this is Jay Z, too. When we started wearing, like, because we had to get in the clubs and you had to be in dress code. Yeah. We all started dressing better. Yeah. I'm just being real. Yeah. We all started dressing better, and I don't think it ever stopped. Now, we have a little more pride in ourselves. Every once in a while, I slip up. Like, I I might not be the best, but I know that, man, when I was rocking that size 48 and it was hanging off, you know? Yeah. Man, as soon as Jay-Z changed this, as soon as the dress code changes, we saw Al Iverson dressing up. We saw uh, Jordan was still rocking the giant pants because that's just who he is. (laughs) He gets a pass. Jordan's going to wear giant pants to the day he dies. But everybody else stepped their game up. So I feel like what you're saying with the WNBA, that was the same thing that happened with the NBA. I watched more uh, videos and, and clips from the WNBA in their games and in their tunnel than anything else this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know you have to have the shoes to go with the uh, outfit. Uh, and yeah. I, I'm just going to say it. The elephant in the room, Nike did not have the best year. Man, Nike no, dropped. No. Mm-hmm. We had the best. Reebok got Angel Reese. Um, a, a couple other brands, New Balance, stole a couple. They, yes, they the, did. the girl that was uh, at, went to UCLA. Um, she plays for the the Sparks. I can't. Her name eludes me. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, they did. They not getting all the talent. They did not. Who had the best? I want to know who you think had the best. Well, they changed CEOs, as you know. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the new CEO has some Austin roots. Oh, oh really? Oh, look him up. Look him up, Mr. Okay. Hill. Oh, yes. Wow. Mm-hmm. This, is out in, this is out in Oregon. Uh, yeah, Oregon, yes. right? Because they got the main campus. Yes. Who do you think? So, if you could give us an idea, who do you think had? And we'll talk about just shoes because clothes will be a whole different thing. <laughs> who do you think had the best year for, in, in terms of shoes then? And we'll say just for 2023. Sorry. I'm, I'm going to say, yeah. say Reebok Puma. I think, you know what, LaMelo, that yeah. was. Yes. My son had, like, I think we bought, I bought three him. different LaMelos. Yeah. Okay, Puma. And it's because people are taking chances. They're mm-hmm. like, okay, we're you you want to think, okay, are we branded out? Okay. Are we tired of being logos and billboards right. for million dollar brands? Right. If look, if I'm going to wear a swoosh, then I want Nike to wear a Michelle t-shirt. Mm. You know, I'm like we're not the billboards and people there was a time that we were about that that was in the 80s and yeah. now we're about uplifting ourselves Correct. Mm-hmm. as we should be yeah so but everything has a circle everything yep. swings around but clothes and shoes go together yep. you have to top it off so, so you're telling me i need to start looking inward instead of outward i need to start looking at maybe the brand whatever it was that i was like ew i would never be caught wearing that that might be the next thing because I know that happened with Champ. Uh, what was it, Champs? No, no, not, yeah, Champion. Champion used to be a thing. If we had Champion when I was a kid, you're like, oh, man, I'm oh, a you champion. Got, you had to have that C. But now, well, now it's a big deal. It was like the shoes were a thing. I saw kids wearing slides. That's a thing. I didn't wear no slides, man. Yeah, shoes. These Yeezy slides. Uh, oh, uh, goodness. All, that was the wildest thing. Yeah. Well, see, now you're going to take me down a different trail. But uh-huh. fashion I'm encompasses here. everything. And now you are approaching the psychology of fashion because oh. – Clothes cannot fix what's between the ears. Right. Yeah. That's true. Uh-oh. That's a clip. We clipping mm. that. That's true. <laughs> Clothes cannot fix what's between the ears. That's true. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> so, Michelle, what what happened to the for the Met Gala to Gala to get to this point though? Is there somebody at the at at the top that you think did that? I I'm just so impressed that they want to go this direction. 
I'd like to point at somebody because <laughs> I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm happy about it, but I'm. When we look in the press and we see Fashion Week, and uh, let's go back to Dapper Dan. Uh, who, yep. who has finally got his yes, he reward. Has. Yeah. And he's been the topic of discussion. He's been the most awarded, mm-hmm. and you can say whatever you want that he began this way and he took labels and logos, but he made his way to fame. Mm-hmm. Now, this was merging the hip hop culture with the fashion industry and the fashion industry looked down on the rap culture back in the 80s. They would not lend clothes, so Dapper Dan filled the gap. Then fashion said, oh my goodness, look how much money we've been missing. Yes, Mm -hmm. finally. Finally. So then after the 50th anniversary of hip hop, they had to tell the whole story. And then look at our black performers, our black athletes. They have been claiming the front rows internationally, not just New York Fashion Week, but Milan Fashion Week, Paris Fashion Week, London Fashion Week. And they have been tearing up that front row. People are not even looking at the runway. It's like, oh, you're here for this show? Oh, but uh, let's see what Beyonce is wearing. Yes. Let's, look, let's look at Miss Jan- what, what, Jackson, if you're nasty, hey, hey, coming hey. through the door. Uh, uh, yeah, she Miss Jackson to me. <laughs> <coughs> if you're nasty, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, look, tell them my age, because, you know, I know that whole That's album right. backwards no, and no, front. You caught, no, you caught a couple of the... the the things that got repurposed. Mm-hmm. So we we don't we don't actually know your age <laughs> in the shop. I'm um, the some age. There you go. <laughs> I'm feeling that. I like that answer. Michelle, when when you knew you were gonna come here with us, what were the key points you wanted us? I want to make sure we get all of the points that you wanted to get out about them. Was there anything that we didn't cover before? Because I got I got at least one or two more. I want to lob at you. So what 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 else do you think? Uh, that did, did you want to make sure that we covered? That this is the age and time of representation of brown culture, mm-hmm. that it is being seen and noticed by mega magazines and mega media, that black dandyism is a recognition of something that has been a part of our African diaspora forever. <laughs> but hey, it's great that you're recognizing it and that the world will see it. I, you know, when I take it back to fashion, what brought me to this point is I was asking, why couldn't we have had this in the 80s? Yeah. Now, I will tell my age, Michelle, because I know this is before your time, but there used to be a show called Miami Vice. And there was a Caribbean brother that looked so good down in that Miami heat that mm-hmm. you ain't never thought he was hot. And he had on double breasted and, and it was tight. And you know him as Tubbs. Okay. <laughs> so I probably lost you a little bit of that because you were young and Michelle, but <laughs> but that that I felt like at during those days he should have been on every magazine. He should have been doing it, and so I want to give that brother the pops because that's the that's the other only time I can remember when we dominated and people were like when they thought of fashion, they thought of black dandyism, they thought of that brother. I want to go back to there unless I mean, maybe we can go to Cab Calloway, but you know what I'm saying? Like in my time. That's the, the earliest one that hit me. Well, I'll say that Miami Vice wasn't past my bedtime. Oh, okay. So, so she might have got a little bit when she was youngin'. pastel <laughs> colors. Oh, yes, it was. Yes, it was. You know, make, making pink and, and canary yellow. Yes, ma'am. And baby blue look good while fighting crime. Yes. And, and don't make me sing the theme song. <laughs> I will do it's, it. All I could think is those flamingos standing when, yes. the, when, when it came on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you can go back as far as Cab Calloway. Yes. The zoot suits are a part of dandyism. Dandyism is about diaspora, confidence, freedom, yeah. presentation of dress and confidence. Not about trends. Yes. No. Yeah. no. It's it's who you are and I that's mm. That is the thing I love the most about what this generation is coming up in right now is that you can express yourself in a multitude of different ways. Like I go with NBA because that's our most stylist members first. 
you have some guys that you have some of their dress may be closer to what we would consider traditionally film. You have some of it that may be considered like traditionally masculine or grunge. And then you have some that are like gender bending as far as um, the direction. You may have something that's closely cropped it. You may have high waisted. You may have midriffs. I'm literally describing one player right now. I'm just picturing Russell, Russell Westbrook, the way he shows yes. up. Yes. You look at him and like, and sometimes, you know, he gets lambasted sometimes. Like, oh my goodness, what does he have on? But there's no denying that that is a strong, powerful black man. He just started a school. He's 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 married to a black queen. He's doing all the things, and he expresses himself and he shows kids. And I say I like it when you can show yourself in such a way that people can go, "That's weird." And he goes, "It's not weird. It's just not comfortable for you. Exactly. It's not normal for you." But he is in his skin. He's in his skin so much that he's okay to show it. And you can't try to do the whole. They always try to attack the masculinity. Oh, he's not. But I mean, he got kids. And he's married. And even if he is, no, there's no issue with that because he'll still go out and put 40 on your head right now. Okay. I love everything about that. And so the idea of us not being a um, microcosm, that instead we are a, a, a homogenous, not a homogenous, a heter- heterogeneous mixture of what it is to be Ooh, a, let's a, clip a that. wonderful oh. dressed black individual. I love that. And so that's what I, I'm jealous sometimes because when I came up, I'm from Texas. I'm from Austin. We had to dress a certain way for us to fit in. And after that, I look at, like, well, my daughter. My daughter's 16. My son's 14. They could wear anything. She has some days she's emo. She has some days she's hyperfilm. She has some days she might have just threw on some pajamas or whatever. Either way, that's Simone 24-7. And so I love that for them. Yeah. All right, then. Yeah, and she's and she's and she's uh, in fashion. She's in a fashion design class right now, and that's the most proud thing. Next I generation, have. dude. Yeah, yeah, straight up. Make making me proud. We here, it's man. <laughs> Is I it like too this. early for him to start her on the brooch game? Oh, it's never too early. She's a she's a she's an accessory girl too. So oh, I like oh, this idea. Okay. 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 Then, then, then that was right on. Can, can I just offer you two two more little examples here? Uh, Eddie Murphy. Huh? I, I, there are two examples of Eddie Murphy. So when he did Delirious and Raw, so when we think of Eddie Murphy in the leather suits, come on, was was every brother interested in those leather suits oh, yeah. when he came yes. out we at both find, times? We were trying to find that red leather Everybody suit. Everybody wanted it. <laughs> and then the really? second thing, when he did Harlem Nights, it was a period Ooh. piece. But tell me, even though it was a period piece, because that was my coming of age as a man, and uh, I've oh that's why. I, I became Dapper D because I thought there was a place to look like that 24-7. After people saw Harlem Nights, oh, that gave every man permission yes, to wear bespoke tailoring. Yes. Oh, yes. yeah. That was exactly what it was for me. Coming of age, getting my first job, I knew I had to have that drip. I mm-hmm. just knew I had to have some fitted suits. So, Michelle, th- this was amazing. I... I, I speak for all of us when I say, um, hurry up and leave so we can <laughs> look better again. <laughs> so I can stop, hold, I can stop okay. sucking it in. I know. Yeah, man. <laughs> man, I keep looking at the brooch. Uh, and then, everything. And then she, I, look, I even, I have, I have on a bracelet, but she, <laughs> it's like. <laughs> Y'all got to go to our Instagram. And, I, when I, and, I, I'm, not, and I'm not, no, no shade to anybody else that ever comes. But one of the most immaculately dressed individuals yeah, ever from you're head doing to it. toe. You're doing and, it. And oozes confidence. Confidence, first and foremost. Yes. Oozes confidence, vibrancy, and just pride. And it was a beautiful thing. When you walked in, the way you you literally lit up the room when you walked in. Yeah. And I appreciate oh, that. And then, and, see, and then also, if you look at her Instagram page, she lit up the room so much that I washed out in the photo. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all think it's the sun. It's an overcast day right now. It is cloudy outside. Where the, where the sun at? When we took the picture, though, I literally became translucent yeah, and it wasn't bright. because of her it, it was it was because of her not because of the sun that's all i'm saying oh. second sun. well you know i like to say a smile is always in style oh keep God. it fashionable well, i'm with that oh my goodness michelle thank you so much for coming through thank uh you. thank you for letting us know about the 2025 met gala i i cannot wait I really, really can. I hope a lot of brothers and, and sisters and designers get the love that they definitely supposed to have. You know what I'm saying? All right. Michelle, can you give me a ticket? Yeah, <laughs> I will try. Uh, I was going to say, yeah. Uh, it's I'll actually go. close to old $3,000 per plate of cold chicken and limp vegetables. Good wow. What'd you just say again? Yeah, <laughs> 
If I start my paper route right, right now, now, I could have that by May 5th. I, I don't want you to pay for it unless you can find me a sponsor. No, we just, that, that'll give me you a, don't a, need about a three sponsors on that one, dog. <laughs> yeah. Somebody, anybody want me Dapper D to wear your, your signature brand, I'll right. go to the Met Gala yeah. for you. Or we could just do like my grandma used to do, just put the, a bunch of chicken and hot sauce in a bag <laughs> and then walk on in. Hey. And, and, okay. and Michelle, I'm, I'm willing to take the bus on. all the way up to New York from here. If uh, if we can't make this happen to cut down costs, I if, might if be you, with you. If you find anybody that wants to sponsor, bro. Oh, you on here too? Hey, hey. look at us. We want to sit together. I don't know. Media personality from Austin. I feel like I'm talking yeah. myself into this. You should. Well, I'm, I'm about to go find some well sponsors. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Michelle. We appreciate you coming through. Thank All right. you. All right, y'all take care more. And coming up, MKAZI doing that South Side. Had to break y'all off with yeah. that one, man. I thought, you know we, I thought we was about to have a cypher. If you get an inf- instrumental, I'll rap. I like, thought we were about <laughs> to. Why don't we do that? Like, I don't yeah. get it. Aren't we at no, a radio well, station? Everybody's not comfortable doing it, though. Yes, That's why it doesn't are. happen more I often. I think people be lying low-key. Everybody mean, can rap. The reason I freestyle is mm. because it's natural and people know that this is all this is off top of the dome and not written mm-hmm. so who cares and when you mess up they were like okay so you are a human you're not a robot thank you and it's their turn to get in so oh. where's the pressure so you gonna freestyle at the end we all gonna freestyle always, no we gonna whenever. freestyle you, you, you just we, tell me when we. to get it Y'all. <laughs> yeah, I'm all of them. They, 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 yeah. them, they yeah. them, yeah. them, right over there. I don't get it. I thought I had to. I've been waiting for Jabari to say, all right, man, come to Wheels of Death. All right, man, <laughs> let's go. And it's going to be 10 beats. And I'm just up there just, yeah, so anyways, man, I'm coming through. Let people know yeah. everything I wear is going to be true. I stick to you like hey. I'm sticking to the glue. Huh. Look at me. I got to unbuckle my shoes. Huh. Came in the spot. Going to get hot. Huh. Came through. I, uh, uh, my God. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was weird, man. Yeah. I was ready. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly I was, how it was I done. thought that's why they didn't let me have a card in yet. Because it was like, he ain't a rap yet. We don't know if he really supposed to be here. <laughs> yeah, you're going to come up here and just start making mixtapes. I'm ready. <laughs> I am ready for somebody to pull my card and say, oh, you can rap? Like, no, nah, I can't rap. Chicken, chicken, break. You know, I'm just here with it, dude. Mm, so. That feel you. I wish. No, nah, I, I play I play the rappers. I don't. I don't. I, <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't. I can't drop bars. I can drop candy bars on the <laughs> ground and that's about it ain't no wait, bars getting dropped after over Saturday here. you got like five days until you will need to start doing yes, that yes sir you better go stock oh, up. up yeah man yeah, yeah, it's about to be real yeah it is Jabari yeah. look like he got full size candy bars too. man yeah them bite size candy bars that's candy who bars. you are man they, they don't do nothing that's pills. the house you, to go you to giving off, you giving out full size candy bars mm-hmm. what nah. you saying no if, if I do that <laughs> if I do that, oh, it's full size. Sir, I don't, bite size. I, don't I do thought that. you said no. you were the trick or treating dad that gave out full size candy bars. No, I son. was gonna get your address. I'm like, hey, where you at, hey, kids? Where you no. at though? I'm so bringing got, all my kids. We just, just going to all a these house. Text messages and all <laughs> this. We going to neighborhoods. We going to a house to get yeah. candy. Then we are gonna go back to San Marcos. I, I don't know where he lived, but now you just reminded me. I'm gonna follow him home after the, after hey, you man, get I out there. I'm getting full candy I'm following him. I get I get paid. But my kids will be when I tell them I know. The spot <laughs> that's all that matters in my kids' eyes, I'll be the greatest. Right. I'm sending yeah. one kid with one costume on, yep. we're gonna change their costume. I'm gonna send them again, right what on back. Nice, nice, nice. All right, let's welcome the downtown alliance. Woo! What's happening? What's hey, happening? Hey, what's hey, happening? Lita Harrison and Raisin McIntosh, hey. sisters. What's good? How y'all doing? <laughs> We're doing okay this morning. It's not 100 degrees outside. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you. <laughs> okay. I know. I was checking the weather. I was like, okay, I saw 60, and there then I is. saw 90. It's like, that's... that's we can't complain. No, you know what? It's a, it's a crazy stretch, though. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we can't complain. We can't complain. How y'all doing this morning? We're doing pretty good. Very good. Good. Tell us, tell us what's going on. Excellent. Tell us what's good. Yeah, yeah. So, um, we're here um, on behalf of Downtown Austin Alliance and uh, the Downtown Austin Alliance Foundation, whose mission is to really create and enhance the vibe, vitality, and value of downtown to really just make it welcoming for all and to make sure that everybody in the city can see themselves downtown and they have a place to do their thing. Um, And as well as focusing in on that vibe and enhancing that vibe through the art parks and the cultural spaces through the foundation's work. And so today we'll talk a little bit about how everybody can get excited about coming downtown. And again, I'm Raisin, Vice President of Downtown Austin Alliance Urban Activation, and I got my friend, manager here. <laughs> you want to say hi? Yes, I am Lita Harrison. I am the program manager at Downtown Austin Alliance. Manager. Look, yes. look, hey, <laughs> I know start. everyone's not in the studio with us right now, but but, but I got I to gotta say something. Go ahead. Y'all seem very chummy. 
<laughs> y'all look like y'all get along. Yeah. I'm going to downtown Austin's Lions right now looking for a job. <laughs> Don't I want to come work with y'all. Don't you start. This look like this is fun. Hey. And even if I don't like nobody else, I'll just come You'll by come y'all's to, desk like twice us. a day. I'm going to be like, hey, <laughs> I, I don't like him. I don't right. like him. Right. But there go them two. <laughs> come on over here. Is everybody Let's else cool, cool like that? I think that's there? an excellent question. I think we love our team downtown. Yeah. Like they I've are interviewed these some really before. Inter- yes, they're really interesting, very talented. We range all the way from communications experts all the way to urban design, architectures. We've got people in, you know, creatively talented on the programming side and public uh, sp- place making. So we do have a variety of folks uh, safe, clean and safe too. So we're doing a lot downtown. And so it's, it's always a great day to come in and just be a part of that team. Man, and they hiring us. Yeah, I mean, they hiring. Yeah. I mean, y'all can't see them, but let's just say <laughs> Fubu. They are uh, <laughs> Fubu. <laughs> That's how I do it now. That's my way. That's my, my dog. Well, that's, that's, that's the sign? That's how I let people know what's going on. Got you. They're like, Courtney, who all going to be there? I'll be like, uh, Fubu. They're like, oh, the food going to be good. I'm ready to eat. <laughs> that's all I do. They say, who going to be there? I say, raisin. They're like, oh, I'm going to go ahead and pack Stop before it. we go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, they hired Tracy Ellis Ross. And then they hired, and, 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 then they, and then they hired Raisin in the Sun Macintosh. With, Hold so on, you, you had me with the raisin, I forgot but you raisin lost me with the Macintosh Blarney Stone. Ain't that Irish? Because you got is. dreadlocks. That is. I don't know any that Irish is. people. Well, with let dreadlocks. me tell you something, man. You know, my ancestors must have been doing some stuff back then. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man, but. uh but yeah, that Macintosh is not Irish, but Scottish. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. You so know, yeah, we they, all they kilt. They're we kilt, <laughs> we yeah. all blended up, man. I found yep. out I was 1% Filipino. Like like, like, <laughs> what? Now, what did you do when you found out? I when I found know. out, I yeah. was like, I was like, and I, I started going in the back of my mind like, who? Yeah. Who, who I, was it? Where did it come from? Yeah, back, back I can, I can teach you how to say hello, Kamusta. Man. Because you're going to need some Tagalog after that. Oh, yeah, most you, definitely. Yeah, you need like 1% of the language. Oh you see what I did there? 1% that's smart. <laughs> he just needed 1%. I'm exactly. Confused. I love it. Exactly. So what's the Downtown Alliance got going on? What's, what's happening? I can't wait to tell you guys. So first, um, go ahead and go to X, uh, XOXO, downtownaustin.com. That's our uh, current campaign now that we're kind of trying to push. Making these, spe- these spaces very welcoming to everybody elevating the culture, understanding what's going on downtown, all this free programming. So I think my biggest feature for our fall programming is obviously the KAZI partnership in the, the Central City Jazz Festival, oh. that is uh, and Gospel Jazz Festival coming up. Yeah. And that is going to be November the 2nd. No, November the 3rd. November yeah, the 3rd. November 3rd. Yeah. November uh, 3rd. Let's get it yeah. right. That's yeah. one with Pam Hart. That's one with that's Pam one with Hart and Chris Pam and, Chris and, 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 and Christopher. And, and, um, nice, nice. Bringing that in. That's a Sunday. Yes, it's yes. a Sunday. Yep. And I am incredibly excited uh, for it. Um, and we also have a Can I Kick It? So we're going to talk a little bit about that. You want to talk Yes, you bit? can. Can I kick it? Oh, yes, I thought, you can. Okay, because if you was asking, we telling you you can, girl. <laughs> I'm all raising. We're gone then. <laughs> <laughs> Which is also free. I'll let Lita talk a little bit about Can I Kick It series, which is going to be this Friday. I'll be there too. Yes, yes. Um, so Can I Kick It is a very unique movie series. Uh, they're based out of Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. And essentially what they do is create their own movie score. It's a it's two gentlemen, oh, um, Gerald cool. and Lester, um, and they um, come together as Shaolin Jazz. And so they're going to be hosting the movie in the park, um, Ghostbusters, um, in celebration of Halloween. And then The Last Dragon will be on November oh, 22nd. Nice. So please, That's my favorite please movie come. of all time. Yes. Yes. Tracy Ellis Ross, did we just become <laughs> friends? <laughs> <laughs> We're best friends now, you and I, because you did that. Yes. Oh. I'm going to work with her and we're going to hang out. and do, nice. We're going to do karate in my garage. Worth it. Yes. Yes, and so then after you come again, so after you come from the uh, the Can I Kick It, yes. again, you're going to come to November the 2nd. November the 3rd. Oh, November the 3rd, <laughs> Sunday. November the 3rd. Uh, yeah, yeah, November the, the 3rd. Sunday. And you're going to come to our, our uh, Central City Jazz yes. and Gospel Festival. Yes. And what I love about it is, have y'all, have y'all heard of Pamela Hart? She is incredible. She is. Oh, I, you I know Jabari I've, I've worked with Pam. I've worked with yeah, Pam for she, 30 years. I've, I've heard her once, and yeah. I promise it was like, Unbelievable yeah, hearing her and a, her whole entire group. Amazing, mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah, she's. Um, I've I've had a chance to work with Pam. Oh, we we go back 
to some 88? Years. Yeah. Okay. You get to 88. She's in the community. Wow. Yeah. She's 88. definitely in the community. Yeah, and she's so deep. I, and I think, um, you know, I, I was raised in a church, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited to finally see and hear gospel in nice. Republic Square downtown. And so I've, I haven't heard of Christopher yet, but I, I'm looking forward to hearing uh, his um, rendition of what he's doing, too, as well. And I also want to send a big shout out to Kenny Thompson. Y'all know him? Do y'all know Kenny Kenneth? Thompson? KT. KT. Yeah, he was here. He was here. Yeah, Kenneth, he was Kenneth yeah y'all know him. <laughs> yeah, we know, yeah, we know <laughs> KT. <laughs> we know he's KT. All yeah, y'all know him. All fam. Um, yeah, it's yeah. all fam. He yeah. spoke, I mean, this is a year or two ago. He talked about the vision of bringing this festival to Republic Square and making it accessible to everybody and bringing yeah. that culture back downtown. And so his vision is coming true, and, and the Downtown Austin Alliance is happy to support that vision. And so I wanted to send a big shout-out to him and his vision. That was that was part of his description, as he yeah. said he wanted to have it there yep. because he wanted people to see people exactly. of color yes. in that space because yes. traditionally – we kind of bypass, like I look at myself, we bypass that area. We go to very specific bars and yep. blocks yep. and to see us there for something good because we know that there's another reason why people of us are you Correct. would be in that area. Correct. Right? Correct. And so Correct. for us to be in that area, not for that negative thing, but for it's the huge. positive thing is a yeah. beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing and yeah. it's a big deal. And, you know, you need leaders like KT to stand mm -hmm. out there mm -hmm. and have those conversations early mm -hmm. on, sit down, get the sponsors, the funding, all the people together to organize it, curate it. And uh, yeah, it's just part of his legacy. And so I, I'm, I'm loving that and big shout out to him. KT. KT. Yeah, he was a lot of fun when he came up here, man. It was like, yeah. cause he's, he's been around for a minute, right? Yeah, yes, and yes. and I, love, I love the realness, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And I think there's a way to express your realness without just grabbing the microphone and just going, ah, nah, Yeah, 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 nah, it's nah, behind yeah. the scenes a lot of times. Yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly, most definitely. Well, this sounds like a, a really, really cool thing. Of course, uh, November the 3rd, that's when the Gospel Jazz Fest happens with Pamela Hart and Christopher, Christopher Spivey at Republic Square, uh, Square Park. Can I kick it? Um, what's the date on that one again? I'm sorry. That is Friday, October the 25th. It starts at 7 p.m. And then the last dragon date is November 22nd, same time. Okay. And can I say this to everybody out there listening? Let's show up. For our people, yes. man. Let's yes. XOXO downtown Austin.com is an incredible campaign. If you want to see the breadth of fall programming, uh, we featured the two, but there's so much free programming in addition to that. And I just want everybody out there listening, bring your family, uh, uh, bring your friends, uh, a church member, whoever it is, come on out downtown, come to the park. It's a public space, it's free, it's welcoming. Let's bring the culture back to our city. Amen to that. XOXO downtown Austin dot com. Put it in your phone. Because there's a bunch of stuff in your phone right. that you don't need. And I, 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 you know what? Right. I'm guilty. <laughs> Tell them, man. I'm guilty of it myself. Yes. XOXO downtown Austin dot com. Put it in your phone. Put it on your. You probably sitting at your desk right now. Mm. Yes. OK. Or if you're driving, then give the phone to somebody else mm. and tell them to put it on their phone and check it out. But y'all are right because we we. Uh, and, and I know this and I'm just going to say this from personal ahead, experience go ahead, go ahead. we 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 wait till the last minute mm -hmm. to support us to support ourselves mm -hmm. you know so, to support what we're doing mm -hmm. and like I said I know there's some personal experience I won't get into it mm -hmm. but uh, but we need to do that we need to um uh, show up. Show up. Thank you. Yeah, we need to show up and show up because we can't complain because we had Afrotech here and Afrotech has moved to Houston and it's kind of like, oh, man. oh uh, where is it? Where is it going uh, now? Yeah, no, exactly. We're here. We're here. And I think, you know, Afrotech, if anything, you know, and they <laughs> a couple things with that. I think they came last year, worked with us, came to Republic Square and, and transformed that park into Culture Park. Right. And we saw, you know, Rick Ross and we saw local oh. DJs, we <laughs> saw markets and, and we saw that park to another level with people of color. And uh, when they left, you know, people were like, hey, you know, they left. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? We have to show up. Yeah. We have to organize. We have to unite. We have to have conversations and talk. You know, we have to help promote and share information. Um, so I think these are all things that are really in our generation to do to to keep our spirit alive and to keep that culture alive and making spaces available to, uh, in areas that aren't uh, necessarily. Exactly, exactly. And fellas, any uh, last questions before we uh, before we break out? Yeah, I wanted to know uh, 
On nope. my application, whose name do I put down? Tracy Ellis Ross. Okay, there it is. All right. I, it is. I did popped just, open the can put, of worms. Put, put so sorry. <laughs> I just want to make sure they know that I know somebody. <laughs> I'm gonna be waiting for you too. Do I just make it sure. Before you, how did you hear about this opportunity? <laughs> Tracy and M. Other Tracy and M. Back in time. You see what I did? Tracy and M. You gave me a nickname just now. Goodness! Oh my goodness! Yes, please excuse me. My my friend, yeah. over y'all the was the dopest ever. Though, this yeah. is incredible thank, energy in here. Thank you so much. We're we're very blessed. I'm really blessed to, to roll with these guys. We're multi generational. Yeah, you as are. you can see, I'm the old dog. He's the dog with like slightly gray hair. And, and, and Court over here in the middle. Young, the I, youngin. It's me. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Simply Courtney. Watch out. Before right. before yeah. we go, uh, I want everyone to go to our social media. We're gonna have a a, a great picture here. Yes. And y'all just the comment on that picture on who. <laughs> stole the picture because Tracy oh, Ellis Ross oh, is out here I, I don't want the picture to go up but I already sent it to our social media and, team and also, you she wrong for what and she I did to the rest of us and I want to make a request to our social media team because I know y'all hear this y'all might have to separate these posts man because like yeah. I mean listen yeah. we trying to bring up the Instagram page y'all yeah. find us on Instagram the pictures that we took today man I think we might have separate. three Let's fire go. photos three separate posts. we might have to have three separate posts yeah. because it's fire on each one and every <laughs> now and then y'all just be putting them all together I don't think you need to lump everybody nah, together nah, you shouldn't have to right. swipe to get a no, leader. Just a little time yeah, yeah. in between. She, you know. she deserves front page. The algorithm is going to do it anyway. I promise you. The algorithm is going to do it. Cover, cover page. Everybody cover needs page. to know who her friend is that's rolling with her, who puts up with her. Because yeah. apparently, <laughs> Raisin, am I right? She yeah. does this all the time. She does it all the time. She always got to steal the show. Hey, hey, as soon as I saw that photo, I said, Sam, you said, I said, she's going to crop us out. I already know it. <laughs> you can look. Leader, I said, that's there, smile. There's one word I want to give you. It's called blend. All right, <laughs> you do not need to help her with that. Ain't a long word. Don't tell gotta, her that. You shouldn't have to look it up. You should not be just helping saying, her tone do that it to down. Us. That's us. So the rest of us feel <laughs> like, oh, she said no. Nope. We feel like part she of is unapologetic. Shine, she girl, said shine, no. Shine. Shine. Nothing wrong. Do your shine. thing, lady. She said do your no. Thing, <laughs> all cheese, all smiles. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Thank y'all very much. Yes, we appreciate it. All right. Awesome. Thank y'all for joining us for the Morning Grind on 88.7 FM KZI. Don't forget, we are here. The entire team is here yep. doing their thing Monday through Friday, 7.30.